from St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. You know, these are infections that affect young people who may not already have regular medical care or, say, Medicare, for example. So they don't have insurance. Where do they go for care? And then if they go to care, what kind of judgment are they receiving when they get there? Um, but what's really uh, exciting, the city of um, St. Louis Department of Health received a large grant from the CDC last year. So they're going to be focusing on listening to black men uh, around sexual health issues in order to improve um, messaging and uh, service offerings to that community. I'm Sarah Fetsky. You can count sexual health among the many, many things that were affected by COVID-19 spread across the country last year. Clinics shut down. Resources were diverted to stop the coronavirus. And now, as a result, public health officials are worried. And joining us today to talk about their efforts is Dr. Hillary Reno. She is the St. Louis County Sexual Health Clinic Medical Director. She's also an associate professor of the Divisions of Infectious Diseases and Hospitalist Medicine at Washington University School of Medicine. Dr. Reno, welcome. Thank you. So how did the pandemic affect local testing sites for HIV and sexually transmitted infections? We may think of those things as being so different from COVID-19 that they would just keep humming along. Was that the case? Not actually, No, it was not the case, unfortunately. Um, there's actually quite a bit of overlap in sexual health care uh, and the, the people that work in that area and those that would have responded to the COVID pandemic. But like other disease states, diabetes and cancer checkups and colonoscopies that were down anywhere from 50 to 80 percent during the pandemic, we saw a similar uh, decrease in STI and HIV testing. Some of that had to do simply with the fact that clinics had difficulty remaining open. Sure. They didn't want their people to get infected. Exactly. I understand another piece of that, though, had to do with some of the components needed for Mm COVID-19 testing. Walk us through that. Yeah. So, In addition to dealing with the need for PPE and personal protective equipment uh, for our clinic staff, we also were faced, especially in last summer, with shortages in the components used for the test kits for STIs like gonorrhea and chlamydia. It didn't affect test testing for HIV and syphilis, but for our more common STIs, gonorrhea and chlamydia. And that had to do with the fact that the companies were diverting all of their manufacturing efforts to assembling and making the components of COVID tests. And so we at uh, had to scramble both at the hospital system and in the health departments uh, to make sure that we had testing equipment for STIs. So ultimately, uh, did this lead to a drop in people in this region being tested for these infections? It absolutely did. Uh, we've looked at this at a couple in a couple of different ways. Uh, we were able to look at data from all the BJC system, including the hospitals and outpatient visits. And during especially that 10-week period from March to the beginning of May with the really the first wave and the stay-at-home orders, we saw a drop-off in STI and HIV testing uh, in that system of 45 percent. Ooh, that seems pretty big. It is pretty big. It meant that about 5,000 HIV tests were not run that would have otherwise been run, and about 4,500 tests for gonorrhea and chlamydia. Wow. So these are a lot of people who were not getting tested at that point. Did they make up for lost time once things resumed and reopened? That's really hard to tell. It's uh, We have seen a return of most of the volume of testing within, say, the hospital system. But at least at the public health level, at the sexual health clinic in St. Louis County in Pine Lawn, we are only about Uh, about back up to two thirds of our usual patient volume. Hmm. So, you know, usually we would see anywhere from six to 8,000 people a year. And in 2020, we only saw about 4,500 people during that time. So could this be a case that people are just not having sex or they're having less risky sex because they don't want to get the coronavirus? Well, it may have had some impact at the beginning, but there is at least data that has been published in the literature and also what we know of from some qualitative interview work and other health departments that 
have shown that there may have been some decrease in the number of partners, but overall, people are still having sex. Mm. And we, those of us that work in the field all have stories of patients who have come in with STIs um, and certainly were not um, curbing their personal relationships in rela- in because of co- fear of getting COVID. So if somebody has one of these diseases and they just go without treatment, they're, you know, the, the clinic was closed at the point that they wanted to get in there and they just move it to the back burner, is that a big problem? It can be. About 70% of all STIs, even at if in, with initial infection or asymptomatic. So that's a challenge right off the bat, that you can have gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, HIV, and not know that you have the infection. But in addition, you might have some initial symptoms that are mild, and perhaps if it had been easy or accessible, you go in and get testing and it get, the infection gets caught and treated. But if you put that off because of the pandemic, or maybe you have a, a you were an essential worker and were working a lot and didn't have time to go to a clinic that had reduced hours, that have, those symptoms would go away. And you could still have the infection, especially in the case of gonorrhea and chlamydia, can leave long-term impacts uh, on patients' uh, infertility um, and can have more long-lasting uh you know, systematic illnesses like we see with HIV and syphilis. So I imagine there's some people listening to us today who are kind of quietly freaking out on the inside that they maybe had some symptoms, they didn't deal with them, they were hoping to never have to deal with them. Mm -hmm. You're saying they they may want to deal with this. They may want to get this checked out even if they're having no symptoms. So where do things stand today? Let's talk about your clinic. Um, Mm -hmm. You're the medical director for the St. Louis County Sexual Health Clinic. Mm -hmm. Are you guys fully back up and running at this point? We are. We are. And so first of all, if people are worried, there's no reason to freak out. Most of these infections are completely uh, treatable and curable. And in addition, we have some great sexual health resources in the region where you can go and get, um, you know, reassuring and affirming sexual health care. And so we do strive for that at the county clinic. Initially, we had to uh, cut back on uh, the walk-in appointments so that we could control how many people were coming in and out of the clinic. Um, But now, uh, and starting actually in March, we were able to resume a combination of walk-in visits and appointments. So people can call um, and make an appointment or they can walk into clinic from during our usual hours. Uh, And we have lots of availability. I guess that's the good part. Um, So you're not getting hit with super heavy demand right now. No, we aren't. Not yet. But you're hoping. Right. And we do have uh, some additional funding this year and some other resources that are allowing us to expand our um, availability to patients seeking sexual health care. And so we're pretty excited about that. But it also means that if the demand goes up, we'll be ready for it. Tell me a little bit about that additional funding. That seems like a rare little bit of good news in the middle of of some anxiety. It is. It's been really interesting with the pandemic. um, Even with that, this big impact on sexual health care, the St. Louis region has more funding resources than we've probably ever had in sexual health. And one of them is this this part of the end the epidemic funding from uh, Health and Human Services. And so that uh, because Missouri is a priority area in in ending the HIV epidemic due to our uh, concern for rural uh, transmission of HIV, the state of Missouri's uh, received a larger block grant to work on that. So and the feds really want to target places yes. like Missouri. Yes. And part of that um, is targeted solely to traditional health department STI clinics like the St. Louis County Sexual Health Clinic. And so we have five years of funding to improve our HIV prevention, uh, which includes increased care uh, for STIs, because STIs are a risk factor for acquiring HIV. So you get somebody in who might have just some minor symptoms for a less serious disease, and being able to work with them helps curb something that could cause problems down the line. Exactly. So a lot of funding right now. That means a lot of opportunities are available for people to come in. You're trying to get the word out about yes. that. And like I said, there's many other places that people can go. Their own primary care doctors, uh, our federally qualified health centers if they're not insured, uh, the SPOT, which is an adolescent clinic um, that sees people under 25 years of age, offers amazing 
full service care for adolescents. Mm -hmm. And then we have other clinics. There's some of our family planning clinics and Planned Parenthood. All of them offer excellent sexual health care. Uh, and testing may be little to no cost, uh, depending on how you qualify for their system. So people should not let this, not let anything hold them back. Right. Is there one place if somebody's interested in getting these services, they're not sure which place might be the best for them, they're worried about money, something like that, where mm -hmm. should they start? Well, I think there's our health department. So the city health department has walk-in testing and their um, at their main office uh, on the first floor. And so they can then link you to treatment if you need it, um, and that is no cost. They also fund the, some of the federally qualified health centers to provide no-cost STI care for uninsured city residents. If you're a county resident, the St. Louis County Sexual Health Clinic uh, in Pine Lawn, uh, we see everyone without regard to residency um, or insurance status uh, for no fee, uh, and that includes treatment. And then, of course, if you're under 25, the spot, and then... Also, the, those FQHCs and Planned Parenthood are great resources, too. So a lot of good options there. Mm -hmm. We were also um, talking earlier a bit about HIV, and it, this is interesting timing here. This past Saturday marked the 40th anniversary of the first report that brought AIDS to the attention of the public. And as somebody who lived through that era, I mean, it feels like we have come such a long way mm -hmm. in our ability to treat this disease. Is this time for a victory lap? Um, probably not. Uh, I kind of thought you might say I, yeah, that. <laughs> sorry. We have come a long way. And, you know, we've seen new HIV diagnoses um, drop uh, in many populations, though not all. And so that's, is, you know, a really important point to mention that um, there are certain pop, uh, populations um, and as we have seen HIV decrease, new incident HIV decrease. Um, but incident HIV is not decreased in all of them, including um, uh, black citizens of the U.S. Um, and some of the sub those groups, the HIV, new incidents HIV may have leveled off, but hasn't started to increase. We actually see similar findings in pelvic inflammatory disease cases. Um, pelvic inflammatory disease cases have dropped in all groups except for uh, black women. And, and their uh, PID rates have increased slightly. And so- How, how would you account for that? That, well, that, those troubling disparities there. Yeah, I mean, it, the, like most healthcare disparities, they're really rooted in um, differences that we see as far as um, uh, economics. Access to healthcare is a huge issue. I think, especially in STIs and HIV, right? Because mm -hmm. you know these are infections that affect young people who may not already have regular medical care, or say Medicare, for example. So they don't have insurance. Where do they go for care? And then if they go to care, what kind of judgment are they receiving when they get there? And I think we all know that when it comes to racial disparities, there is, you know, a systemic racism in medicine, um, which is compounded most likely by the stigma that people see when they're seeking out sexual health care that not only has people being turned away, but also just discouraged and seeking care. So that's a big problem. It sounds like it's very much on your radar. Do you think mm -hmm. the fact that COVID-19 ended up having just such stark disparities in terms of who was affected by that and how, that that's put that on, on some other people's radar as well, where it wasn't before, maybe? I think so. And I think, unfortunately, when people start to look at it in sexual health, they're going to see disparities that are out of proportion to what we saw with COVID. Um, there's data from 2018 that shows that gonorrhea rates in uh, the county amongst black citizens is 19 times that what we see in white citizens of, the, of St. Louis County. 19, 19 times. 19 times, yeah. That's got to be just upsetting, I mean, in, in the role that you're in, to know that it's, Incredibly. it's so high. Yes, absolutely. And it... Um, it's probably one of the reasons that those of us that work in sexual health are so focused on this because we not only see the numbers, which are um, shocking, but we see it day to day, each patient that we talk to. Um, and, you know, nationally, those rate differences are anywhere from three to five percent. And so, you know, it's when you get into uh, more urban areas where you see these greater disparities and why s sexual health care is such a key public health function um, that it needs this support um, and it needs awareness.
Hmm. So that's something you're very focused on. Are there efforts particularly to try to target that community to let them know, hey, we've got resources, especially now we have even more resources? Right. So there are at least um, as far as us trying to get the word out about the sexual health clinic in the county. Um, but which really uh, exciting. The city of um, St. Louis Department of Health received a large grant from the CDC last year uh, called Community-Based Approaches to Reducing STIs. And that grant is a three-year grant for them to listen to the community. So they're going to be focusing on listening to black men uh, around sexual health issues in order to improve um, messaging and uh, service offerings to that community. That's super exciting to have that much funding directed just to listening to people. That's great. So this is a long-standing problem here. Mm -hmm. It sounds like this is the time where if we're ever going to do anything to start bringing down those those troubling disparities, the funding is here, the attention is there. It's just going to take uh, execution at this point. Exactly. So one other thing I wanted to talk to you about today, I think this is kind of interesting. I understand you're a consultant to the CDC, mm -hmm. um, and you help them update their guidelines for clinicians and health departments dealing with these issues. And these are going to be coming out this summer, these updated guidelines. Lines. Is that something that ended up being delayed by the pandemic as well? It, it was very delayed by the <laughs> pandemic. When were they originally <laughs> supposed to come out? Last year. We had our meeting in the summer of 2019 and then had hoped to have it out the beginning of 20, uh, the summer of 2020. And um, not only was it uh, all of us very busy uh, from March to June of 2020, um, but many of my colleagues at the CDC uh, were were. Uh, regularly deployed. I imagine. Yes. Yeah, there yes. was there was a pandemic going on. Very much. So now that those are coming out, what do you aim to do with those new guidelines? Yeah, so these guidelines are directed towards clinicians, all clinicians, whether they be in sexual health or HIV-focused care or primary care or family planning. Um, and the goal is to uh, give them the most up-to-date treatment recommendations because we do have concerns of things like antimicrobial resistance and treatment failures when it comes to certain STIs, and some of them require continual follow-up and management. And because many of them are asymptomatic, we have to do screening and have screening recommendations. So these treatment guidelines are really uh, aimed at clinicians to improve their practice. Hmm. Well, that sounds like great stuff. Uh, it's good to see things are, are getting rolling again, even for the CDC. Uh, Dr. Reno, last question. What is the thought you'd want to leave people here with today as, as far as your work and all these issues we've talked about? Well, what I would say is, you know, sexual health is uh, a very important part of healthcare. It's not uh, just a one-time check once in your lifetime. Um, and you know, also that there are many clinicians and clinical systems out there that are sex positive in their approach, that understand that sex is part of uh, a normal human life, and that uh, these infections are easily managed and treated, uh, and there's no reason to be afraid or to freak out, and that we're there to help you. Well, Dr. Hillary Reno, thank you for joining us today and giving us that dose of hope. Thank you. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. And leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.